I'm here today at Atlantis Bookshop with Andrea Asti and we're going to be discussing his new tarot deck that's currently on display at Atlantis Bookshop downstairs till the end of June and it's called The Book of Shadows. Uh, the Book of Shadows is the name of the guy I gave to the project. Los Carabeo that published it have to change the name because they are already publishing another Book of Shadows. So the uh, business name is The Lost Card of, ta of the Tarot. And so. you got a book and cards to go with it, it's like yes, a pack. Yes, it's a box. It's a limited edition box published in English by Los Carabeo. And if people wanted to buy it, it would be from Atlantis Bookshop or is it available? Yes, but Atlantis Bookshop, even because online I think there would be very few copies left. It's very difficult to be found now. Ah, that's good. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe you could tell me why you wrote, or why you made this project. Yes, I wanted, uh, okay, a little bit of setting back of my history. Why, my mother was a tarot reader, but it was a special tarot reader because she believe in magic but in, a, in many different ways and she transformed my childhood in a very magic one an example of a reading she was doing I mean, time to go to bed I was a child she was reading the tarot and she said I see in the cards telling time for you to go to bed and so of course you go to bed if the tarot are telling you that you have to go to bed I mean the cards are spoken so you have to go to bed <laughs> and so this was the game she were playing with us I mean she was a serious tarot reader but for us was playing with that playing with magic and uh, when I wanted, when I decided to start to create tarot cards for myself, I wanted to create, I mean I always was fascinated by tarot of course because it was part of my life, thanks to my mother. So I wanted to create something and I, I mean I was a painter at the time, painter, a writer, not a multimedia artist. So I wanted to create oil paintings with every single card. And then I realized that it would take a lot of time, even because I wanted to work with huge format. So I said, no, it's not possible. So I said, let's see, create a real tarot deck, I mean, working with paper and inks instead of oil colors. So I started to study to create my own cards. And then the, the problem is how you create a deck of cards. I mean, which st the style is my graphic style, my artistic style. But the content, I mean, you can create whatever you want with tarot. I mean, you have the symbology, you have the archetypes, you have the meanings and then you have to find an image to convey that meaning. And wow, it's so fascinating. So I decided to research and I fell in love with for the Marseille deck and the Visconti Sforza ones. There are three different set of cards and I wanted to stay close to that one. And while working I had the idea to create something that looks antique. And so this is the reason why I work in this, in this medium. The tarot deck's like a story, and you've more or less kept to the original tarot ideas, or have you changed it a bit more for your kind of idealised way of the tarot? No, I, I believe that the tarot are magic because they are coming from history, and so through the era they are like aggregation of meaning, images and everything. If you come back to the tarot, the tarot were used just for playing cards but in a clever way because it's the end of the Middle Ages and the beginning of the Renaissance and you cannot contest the, the, the power of the time. So the tarot were used to mock the powers or mock historical figures or archetypical figures like the banker or they were starting to go there of the pop, or reinterpreting old legend, like the Popes, the legend of the Pope John, the, the only female dra in drag as a pop. There's a lot of history that is a reflection of the early Christianity when female were allowed to be priests. So is it, this is the reason why for me were very very interesting, the tower I mean, because they are they have a lot of history, they are rich in history. So I wanted to keep it as small as possible. This is the reason why I reinterpret the Marseille deck and the Visconti Sforza. They are the oldest uh, tarot ever found. And I wanted to stay there. I didn't interpret the meaning, I interpret the shape of it. But I wanted to get rid of the religion things, the Christian, Christian religion things. I wanted to create them like the blueprint of the 
Marseille and a Visconti. And when I realized what I was doing, I had the idea to present them like the real first star I ever created. And so I have just a question to answer to create all the world that came. Who created the tarot and why? That's a very good question. For me, I always kind of thought it's one of those lost uh, books that have been used throughout the centuries and uh, that each tarot deck is a different type of book, isn't it? Which is what you've done here because yours is quite an alternative world. Yeah, absolutely, yes. At the end, I created as a fictional al um, alchemist uh, Johannes Athanasius Prometheus, so Prometheus from Prometheus, so the one that stole the fire to give the gut, he stole fire to the gods to give it to the mankind. So it's really, really interesting as a metaphor, so I wanted to use the metaphor to bring some meaning in my alchemy. So the alchemist, I created this alchemist, the alchemist, playing around, invented the tarot, but he kept like a journey, a journal, of everything he did, all the experimentation, and so I create like a tome of alchemy. This, of course, is not alchemy, it's something crazy that I invented. But while I was creating, I mean, I was just creating pages with images and symbols and fictional ciphers, I mean, everything decrypted in a strange language. And it was there, just images. And then, while I was doing it, a story started to develop. And so I started to write down the story. And so, it was another, another question rise, how to use these stories, the fictional stories, in the setting I was creating. And so I said, well, they were discovered and they were deciphered by some bright mind in some university. And so I created a university, created a professor and everything. At the end, when things were calling for another one, I, I ended to create a full parallel water with newspaper, fictional, I mean, fictional newspaper, fictional logos, uh, museums, professor, the fictional quarreling between professor, I'm right, no, you're not understanding anything, and they were quarreling, and the, the, all the letters, and I invented everything, it was three years of work, and the last thing was to connect everything, because I have, at the end I had the tarot, the book of the alchemist, the fictional stories, I mean the short stories, a collection of stories, and all the props I created around, letters and things, magical things. So I said, okay, now I have to connect everything. And so I created a fictional documentary, and it was, it is, one hour and 24 minutes long, so quite long for a documentary. But it, I mean, I wanted to start with like BBC professional style, everything is very serious, very precise, and as long the story goes on, it started to be crazier, whimsical, m less credible and less credible with a lot of imagining coming in, crazy things happening, crazy people talking and I have a lot of fun because all the crazy people are my friends. <laughs> I mean I call all friends I have around the world from Japan, Germany, France, Spain. It's the state I said okay you I created the characters around their personality so they are perfect actors because I use them as they are. So we have a lot of fun. My best friend, uh, one, I mean, one of my best friends in the film is Jim Ferringer, uh, a very talented, he was a very talented uh, artist, he passed away unfortunately this October, He's a, he was a very old man and he, he cre we created together this strange character professor, he, we, I gave him the name Norman Desmond and he's a quote because he, we love Sunset Boulevard, the old film. So Norm, Norma Desmond is the name of the fictional character that uh, Gloria Swanson is playing in the film. So all the film, everything I've done with the, 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 the book, the, the tarot and everything, is a quote or a reference or something. There is the, if I remember right, is the Queen of Pentacles, if I remember right. She is a quote from The Bride of Frankenstein. She has a white swift of hair. Of hair. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yes, yes, exactly. So I put there my favorite film, quote, poetry, and in this way it became far richer than I, than I thought or I had a thing to do. Because the film's actually playing in Atlantis Bookshop at the same time as the exhibition's going on. Only the trailer. The trailer saw is one minute or something because it was too long. But I will give for free the film 
to everyone and we'll share it very very soon. I want to put something in order and then I upload it again with subtitles for the languages that are not English. I mean, the film is in English, the voiceover is in English, but not every single character is speaking in English. So I will give it to for free for people because I want to share the idea, the dream, mm -hmm. and see what they say about it. Because it's a game of fantasy, it's not a solipsistic game. I mean, it's a sharing game, it's an idea I want to share with people and see what they what they think if I want to play around and going on. I mean it's something I would like to do was something similar to Terry Pratchett did. Terry Pratchett created disco world yeah. writing. I want to create a visual disco world. I mean my world with my style. And what you see here in the exhibition started in Turin, something like ten years ago when I created one of the characters that they know you find in the book or the book of shadows. And it was an Elizabeth an explorer, uh, a descent, it is an the anagram of my name. And I invented I invented it and it was a very strange adventure that I present a Natural Science Museum in Turin, mixing its diary of voyage, exploration and discovery with real object in the museum. And this is the idea I had when I created the Book of Shadows. I wanted to create uh, an exhibition where real ancient objects were mixing with my fictional world. Because at the end, I wanted to make people think about that, let's say, the liminal space, the line that is between reality and fiction. Because we think that reality is something that's there, fixed in stone to discover. But if it's, let's say, something easy, simple like a flower, the flower I see, the red rose I see, is something completely different from what a cat sees, or to say, flower, or a dog sees, or a bee sees because we don't see infrared and the bee is able to see it. So it's the same flower, yes, but what is the reality of the rose? I mean, we perceive reality in so many different ways. We are just tridimensional beings. A four-dimensional being can be able to see something that we are not able to see. A two-dimensional being will never be able to see something we are seeing and perceiving. So what is reality? Reality is a myth, is a fake. Reality has to be interpreted. And so it's for historical reality, for everything surrounding us. So I wanted to focus my research, artistic research, in that process that make myth be. And so, I mean, this is the history, this is the myth, how we came from history to myth, all that interpretation. So what is real, what not? In my field you see a lot of, I mean, you can see a lot of real historical information, very, very precise, but they are mixed with absolutely whimsical and fake news, as we say today. So, this is what I wanted. It's a challenge. It's a beautiful challenge for the artwork, and the book's fantastic as well. Uh, just going back to you saying about it being a myth, well, the great thing about myth is that myths last forever, don't they? And okay, they change, like the tarot changes through time. Yeah. Um, and in your little book, you've got like little stories for each card, is that right? I uh, not for every card. There is the story for the deck. The deck have a full story, but then there is every single page of the book, the tome, the manuscript, written by the alchemist. It has every single page has a story. I created the story for all the setting. I mean, the story of the, the card, the tarot card, is the parallel world. The way they were created, the way they were lost, the way a secret sect, Umbra, the mean shadow in Latin, want to take back the tarot because the tarot has a real power. And at the end I unveil what can be or may be this real power of the tarot to opening the door for, Im for us, for imagination. And it's real, I mean the tarot are Calvino, an Italian, Italo Calvino, a famous writer, Italian writer, too wrote many books about tarot and fantasy and etc. He used to use the tarot as a storytelling machine. I mean, if you just select four cards and put them there on the table, you can create infinite stories, starting with every time details on the image you are seeing or just all the cards. So if we play, like, if you see the card, like child, see the world, we can live in a world of magic. I mean, if you take a, ch a child and you let him talk about the world surrounding him, it would be a mythical, mystical world full of magic, full of beings. 
ethereal beings and fairies and ghosts and goblins and everything is magical but then we lose the ability of dream the ability of creating our, our, our own reality in this poetic fictional way and this is what I wanted to recreate my world is a poetic world I mean I want it to be a poetic world I mean a place where you can lose yourself you can lose yourself and just dream and think and be fascinated I mean and try and then I mean the viewer will see if I achieve my goal or not I mean I cannot say it I mean well, one of the things I've been quite concerned about, and I think other people have as well, is that myth seems to be disappearing in our world as it becomes more rational. And um, that's why I love your tarot deck, because um, there's an element of rationality through it, but it is mainly myth, and people can get what they want from it. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that, I mean, I did this project as a reaction of what is surrounding me. I mean, I, really mean, I lived for many years in a country, Italy, that is my country, where if you want to be an artist, if you are an artist, you are surrounded by people, friends, people that are loving you, that constantly remind you that you are doing not a serious job. Because creating art is not a job. It's something stupid, trivial, it's not serious. It's childish. It's childish. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I don't like this vision of the world. No. Because, I mean, when I was there thinking about which kind of university I wanted to, to attend, everyone will say, oh, the one can give you the best job, and what is the best job? The one to give you more money. So this is not my vision of life. I don't want to do something like that. I want to do what I like and create my job using my passion, my vision of the world. Because we don't need just someone that is a plumber or someone that is an astrophysic. Or if, I mean, now we don't need anymore even astrophysics. I mean, a lot of friends of mine are astrophysics. They are working in, I mean, answering the phone in call, in call center. So please, it's so sad. <laughs> we need to go back to live in a world that is better. I mean, we have to stop to polluting, to using, to exploit it. We are not the master, we are not the owner of anything. We are here just for a blink of time, and we are gone in another blink of time. So we don't possess anything, we don't control anything. It's a myth that the, the men are in power of everything. It is, unfortunately, is, is due to the three monotheistic religion is a great, horrible mistake that was originated by them. Because before that, the world where we were living was the world of the gods. It was completely different. You respect the gods. You, f you respect the forest. You respect the rivers, the brooks. You respect your nature. Now, no, the, uh, the Abrahamic gods give us the world for, for being like our toy. And we are destroying it like children with a toy. It is not correct, because no. we don't possess the soil, we don't possess anything, we just live in the world. And we should be living with it, shouldn't we? Not exactly. living on it. As a, exactly, and then, I mean, I'm, I'm not a religious person, but I'm a very spiritual person. I mean, I work in office, of course, because I have to pay my bills, because everyone was doing the same. But then I was not happy, I mean, was there, working in an advertising agency, writing, as a copywriter and so I was inventing things, it was fantastic, but then I said, I, I mean, I, every day it was heavier. And I said, why I have to spend my time writing stupid things to make people to spend money to buy things that they don't need? I said, I don't want to live in this way, I can use my brain, my energy, my passion to communicate something I want to communicate. And so I started to write my books and illustrate, and it is the way I became an artist. And with your art that you've done here, what we've got on exhibition are the original cards, aren't they? Yes, yes, um, these are the original cards, yes. And do you want to uh, quickly explain how they were designed? Because we were just discussing they're a certain cardboard, isn't it? And they're yes, made in a certain uh, way. Is, um, I have to devise a technique to make them look antique. So I used cardboard, a very thick cardboard that was glued to other cardboard in, in layers so to create a solid structure. But I have to antiquate. The first part of the job was to make antique, the basic. And so I use natural pigment like coffee, tea, carcade, and then acrylic colors, then dry, press everything so I have a perfect plain sheet of paper. Then inkwork, I draw everything in inkworks. 
and then I elaborate the last part with oil colors so they don't destroy each other, I mean they don't combine and then I coated everything with a special wax to give the strange feeling when you touch it or the strange look, make everything darker and some color pop out so they look antique, if you see them, they look antique in the page of the book, they look, it looks like an ancient tone. It does, yes. The only thing <laughs> is say it's not ancient because the style is too modern. I mean, it's not ancient the style because it's my artistic style. So it's, it's a trick again. It's <laughs> real, it's not real, it's fictional. Uh, it is the reason why I wanted to create two cards. You see here a, a touch on the wall, there are the original cards and the printed one. Mm -hmm. And there are two cards that have no name, no number, and they are completely different from everything. And I put it in the deck, in the tarot box, I mean, printed by the Scarabella, and without saying anything. You don't find mention of two, these two cards everywhere, anywhere, I mean. Sorry, English. <laughs> I lost, I was thinking and I lost the sentences. Anyway, and so I said, let's see what happened. And then I started to receive emails. I said, I found two more cards. What they are? I mean, it is silent. I don't know. Well, you will discover it. You will see. And then one day I start talking in, I mean, I record myself in videos and interviews. I said, okay, there are two more cards. And they are no names or number, they are just figures. Because I, I would like to you, that you play the same game I did to create this world. Because so many people that buy tarot decks, they expect to have the solution of everything already there. There is the booklet, and the booklet gives you exact the meaning of every single card. And so you learn, you repeat, but it's like switching off the intuition. No, if, if using tarot you switch off your intuition, you are not using tarot. I mean, it's like mechanically repeating something. No, you have to plunge in every single card, you have to leave that card, feel it, listen to it, talking with it. I mean, it's a process of imagination, it's a process of more complex process. So I said, I give you two more cards, use it invent the meaning and the name and I discussed with amazing people that invented meaning and names for two these cards in an incredible way so I was far beyond what I thought when I was creating the cards it was amazing and then they asked me which one is the real meaning and I said no one has the real meaning there is your meaning if you believe in it it's real it's real for you so it was like a uh, what in philosophy is called a thought experiment or a social experiment and have a lot of fun. I mean, not everyone uh, understood it and not everyone was happy about it because, I mean, I had to pay a lot of attention when I was communicating the pro. I mean, when the, the deck was released because people thought to find the explanation of the cards in the booklet. In the booklet there is the story of the parallel world because this is, was, was important for me. You don't find the explanation of every single card. You find the explanation of the tarot world. Part is real, part is fictional. But it's a game of fantasy. I mean, I want to, to show people what you can do with tarot. I created an artistic world, but if you are a tarot reader, you can create a sensitive world. Why not? Or you can create a storytelling machine. You can have ideas of how to do something in your day. I mean, intuitions, hints. This is the real power of tarot, fantasy. If we go on printing every time tarot deck with books that say exactly how to read it, and this is the only way to read it, we are not doing a good service. Real magic is finding it out for yourself. Like, you know, I you said so. it fantastically, it just is. But people do want to be told the answers, don't they? And we have to guide people, you know, I, like, I was lucky to be guided in certain things, but we do have to ponder on things ourselves. So. Yes, I, I, I don't contest this part because I, I mean I studied too tarot and I needed guidance. But one thing is to be sh I mean I think every book of about tarot has to like to lead you to the door. But you I mean the book can even open the door, but you have to cross it. And from that moment moment is your own personal journey. And I, I really believe in it. Because we live in the, in the world where you have, everything is like packed, ready for use, packed love, packed food, milk, everything is there, ready to be used. But sometimes you have to do something by yourself. I mean, you can buy a cake, and you can buy a cake, 
or you can do a cake. I prefer to do my own cakes. Yeah, you mean like so bake a cake? Get exactly, yes, 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 baking, yes, yes, doing everything mm. by yourself. Why not? It's another mm. process. It's completely different. And I love this aspect of, of reality to create your own things, interact, and not just take something that is ready, use it, and go on like that. If you want, of course you, you can, I mean, no one prevented to do it. But I will challenge you and say, what if? Why you don't step a little, why you don't go a little bit further? Why you don't go, I mean, there is a the line of the horizon. Why you don't want to cross that line? I want to cross that line. I mean, I did it and I'm happy to have done it. No, really, because at the end, I mean, I started with the idea of creating just an exhibition about tarot. I ended creating a huge parallel world to change my life because now I'm working only on the enlargement of this world. I mean, I'm going on everything I'm doing now is like a spin-off. Another part of this world is exploring more, going deeper, and I love it. Oh, that's brilliant. I wish you all the best with it. If people wanted to get in touch, do you have a website? Yes, it's my first name and second name dot com, so www.andreaster.com but I'm on Facebook, on Instagram and I love uh, interacting with people so I try to answer every single email, every single comment and everything I mean, I mean, so I mean Get in touch people! <laughs> yes, because no, I mean, the best part in where it's happened when someone use one of my tarot or see some of my film or painting or whatever and they tell me what they feel and what they see because it's enriching. I mean, I love that part. Otherwise, I mean, we don't have to think about the artist like a solitary man secluded in his tower that don't want to know anything about what you think about his work. It's not that, it's a dialogue. I mean, I put the first sentences. Now it's up to the others to go on in to keep with the going. talking. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Andrea. This no, has thank been you. Brilliant. And I wish you all the best and people come down to Atlantis and see you with the art. I hope so. I will be here, uh, I think, every Friday and Saturday. So I try to be here. So if people want to just make me have questions, I'm here to answer. I mean, it will be a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you to you.